Hi everybody, my name is Mike. I'm the Giant Ocean Tank Supervisor here at the New England Aquarium, and we're hanging out at the top of the Giant Ocean Tank to talk about one of my favorite programs here at the aquarium, the Gulf Stream Orphan Project. So Gulf Stream Orphans are fish that we find here in New England each and every summer that are actually native to tropical parts of the Atlantic Ocean. We call them Gulf Stream Orphans because the Gulf Stream itself is what's responsible for transporting these tropical fish all the way up across the Atlantic Ocean here to New England. And in the summertime, waters here are warm enough where they'll actually survive, even though they like nice, warm, tropical reef ecosystems. In the summers, the coast of New England is close enough in water temperature that they'll actually survive the trip and they'll hang out here locally with us. So what we'll do here at the aquarium is each and every summer and fall, we'll send divers and collectors down to the coast of Massachusetts and Rhode Island and we'll keep an eye out for any of these unusual species. And if we can find them and collect them, we'll bring them back here for exhibit at the aquarium. And we are a big fan of this program because these fish are, they love warm water. And once it becomes too cold for them, they're not gonna be able to survive. So we can actually exhibit really cool tropical species without traveling very far. And they're species that otherwise wouldn't survive in the wild. So the, the Gulf Stream is a very large ocean current. It's responsible for basically all of the climate impacts that the Atlantic Ocean has, particularly in North America here. Um, and it carries probably millions of fish all the time. It's a con continuous conveyor belt of water moving northward in the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, each and every summer, we'll probably come across a few dozen fish on our uh, collecting dives when we're going down to Rhode Island and to the Cape. Um, and Anywhere on the exhibits, you might have a handful of species, depending on which exhibit we're talking about. Um, and overall, I would say in the past maybe 35 years of uh, collecting uh, this way, the aquarium's probably been able to report and collect hundreds, if not thousands of fish. So the Gulf Stream has been around for tens of thousands of years, I'm pretty sure. And so for as long as the Gulf Stream has been around, fish have probably been transported by it here to New England. The aquarium is an institution that's about 50 years old, and I know we have records that date back to the mid 80s of going out to try and collect animals uh, that we would call Gulf Stream orphans here locally in New England waters. And our citizen science network, the GSO project, has submitted hundreds of reports and in total probably about thousands of fish uh, just in the past maybe five to 10 years or so. There's a lot that we still don't know about the Gulf Stream orphan phenomenon. So some of the questions we ask here at the aquarium are why do we see the species that we see each and every summer? Uh, what is it about those species that make them uh, able to survive the trip by the Gulf Stream and reside here in New England during the summertime? Uh, we also want to know what their impact is of local ecosystems. And probably most importantly is that the future of marine ecosystems is really uncertain uh, due to things like climate change. So we're not sure what the future holds for fish that are transported by the Gulf Stream. And we don't know uh, for different things like the expansion of geographic range of species. Uh, we might start to see fish living in places they didn't used to as uh, environments change. So we're hoping that by consulting the history and all the data that's sub submitted to us by citizen scientists, we might be able to learn more about not only the phenomenon itself, but also larger health implications for marine ecosystems here in coastal New England. Here at the aquarium, we do our best to recreate native marine ecosystems in each exhibit that we have. So while we have lots and lots of different exhibits here at the aquarium, there are actually only three areas that are showcasing Caribbean species. So those are our blue hole exhibit, which is in our temperate gallery. It's where our, our, our Goliath grouper hangs out. We also have our Yaki Core Reef Center on the fourth floor, which is home to a variety of Caribbean reef ecosystems. And then of course we have behind me the giant ocean tank, which is our largest Caribbean exhibit. And so any of those areas would be appropriate to find Gulf Stream orphans since those are fish native to the Caribbean in their, in their home range. So typically what we'll do is because a lot of the Gulf Stream orphans we find are very young, they're very, very small fish. They might only be the size of a nickel or a dime when we find them. Uh, they'll actually go through a quarantine process to make sure that they're healthy and able to join the exhibits. And then they'll go to the Yaki Coral Reef Center where they can sort of use that, those smaller exhibits as a nursery environment. And as they become adults, they can transition to one of our bigger exhibits like the giant ocean tank. And that's where they'll live the rest of their lives.
So if you're interested in getting involved with the Gulfstream Orphan project, uh, there's a couple ways you could do that. So if you're interested in learning more, you can go to the aquarium website, neaq.org, and check out a bunch of blog posts we have about the process. You can also go to gsoproject.org to learn about the program specifically. And we also have a way to submit data on inaturalist.org. And if you're a citizen scientist, if you go out in nature and you find creatures often, I highly recommend checking out that uh, website. And it has an app where you can log all your observations. And scientists can then use those observations in the research that they're working on. Um, and if you're a scuba diver, uh, you can learn a lot from iNaturalist and from those reported sightings. You can see some of the hot spots where people are diving to find these fish. And we always love more and more data. The more we can learn about this phenomenon, the more we can learn about our marine ecosystems and their overall health. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I hope to see you at future virtual visits and of course here at the aquarium sometime soon.